After the COVID-19 pandemic, now the new pandemic we are dealing with is the pandemic of lies. Yeah. It is it's, it's the pandemic of lies. You know, pe people stand up and they say things that they think make sense. You know, I've been looking at politicians and fortunately I have the opportunity of having served in cabinet. I know how a budget is drawn and I know how much money we have in our resources to draw a budget. When a political leader, a national leader tells people, I will put aside 150 billion for market women. I'll put aside 50 billion for Boda Boda. I'll put aside 100 billion for this. I know how much our budget is and the projected growth of our budget. That time you have not talked about the amount of money that you are taking to counties. You have not talked about transfers for the education sector and so on. Where are you going to get that money to provide that kind of service? You're just lying to those people because you are telling them things they want to hear. And because they won't ask you questions, you just get along with it. You know, when you keep saying, this deep state, who is that? And the people are using that phrase and complaining are sitting, are members of the National Security Council. They hold public offices. They tell you they are powerful people. So who is that? You know, this facade and the stories that are being co uh, uh, coined and being bandied around, just so that people create excuses and the camouflage around things that don't exist to survive or create excuses and pathways of lying and carrying the public along with them. I want to ask you as church ministers, I am your son and as a public servant, we have a country to serve. Let us not be victims of some of these lies that you keep hearing around. But things that just don't make sense even to a fool. How would you tell people? Yeah. How would you stand up? I'm asking you. How, Bishop, how would you stand up in public and tell me, who is that? And then you actually you don't even have the courage enough to take a decision and say, okay, because I don't agree with the Attorney General and all these people, me, I'm not going to be party to you. In the morning, you speak like government. In the afternoon, you speak like opposition. <laughs> you see, the question, let's be honest. You see, the total annihilation of common sense and betrayal of common sense in the political practice in this country is shocking. When you tell people about there being a, who is that? What is that deep state? The Inspector General who seated here? We have passed a constitution that requires us. It's in black and white. You know, even me, if I have to give directions to the Inspector General, the law requires that I put it in writing. And since I became Minister for Interior, I told the nation the other day, I've written two such letters, one to Boynet and one to him, to provide policy guidance. And even before I send it, I ask the Attorney General, does it pass master? That the, <laughs> the Attorney General says, under the law, you can't do this. So, stop here, let us proceed. Now, how can you turn around in a country of the amount of freedom that we have? Nairobi, for your record, Bishop, Nairobi houses the largest number of foreign correspondents and media houses on this continent. I've challenged people, if you don't think there's freedom in Nairobi, go and report from Addis. Yeah. With all this freedom we have, in a country where the president is insulted liberally by everybody, by opposition politicians, how would you tell me that there exists a covert, dark op element of government that is intended to do certain things? When did you last face and scrutinize and excoriate the Minister for Security? I am here to answer questions. Which is this dark side that exists? Where is it? Don't, don't be drawn, I'm telling you, don't be drawn to some of this. You see, we are unfortunate that we have a brand of leaders. I told you earlier that the narrative we need to be discussing about the future of our country is how we handle corruption and how we create an integrity system of managing our country so that the resources God has given us can benefit our children and our children's children. Now, instead of having that uh, conversation, the artists, the political artists, who want to avoid that conversation? They come up with all manner of excuses. 
Oh, there are people who hate me called deep state. And you sit with them daily. So when do they become deep? When they are with you or when they are not with you? <laughs> so, look. Forget about this. We run an open, transparent, accountable government. Our president, my boss, is probably one of the most liberal and open-minded heads of state on this continent. We are a responsive government. I am not aware. Tell me what you want to know about this government and where you want to go, I take you there. Do you want to go and sit in MC3 in Mutiambai's office and watch the patrol thing? And so on. When you ask questions, we will answer. But you see, to create campaign jargon, you know, this, this story of you must look for a way of creating some level of sympathy so that people can sympathize with you, that you, you are an underdog. So you create some phantom, some fictitious devils <laughs> that are existent somewhere that are against you. And these devils are not described. So you use some communist type language and call them deep state. And say, you know, these people, they may be having the state, but we have God. God is for all of us. You can't have God yourself. <laughs> so, Bishop, forget about this thing, my brother. Let's just go forward and build our country. This doesn't does exist. Secondly, secondly, and that's why I say thank you for asking me this question, because I never, never get this opportunity to respond to these things. <laughs> So I tell you what I think. I mean, if I wasn't before religious be, uh, leaders, I would have even used a stronger language. <laughs> because this is the petty, it's empty, there's nothing, it's hollow. People are just loitering around saying things that don't exist. Let them deal with issues. You know, I keep telling people, these elections are like an interview. You leaders have conducted interviews before, haven't you? Yes. So when I come before you, you tell me, uh, Fred, good, you want this job, yes. Where have you been? I tell you, I was headmaster there, I was this. They ask, you ask me, what did you do when you were there? How did you handle the students? What did happen? And so on. People are running around here who have held public responsibilities. They are not accounting for what they did when they were holding those public responsibilities. You are the religious leaders. The story of talent is in the New Testament. What did you do with the ones I gave you first before you come for more? Now, yeah. Now they are lying. Yeah. They are moving around and saying, Oh, you know me. As you know, please sympathize with me. There is a certain dark group of people called Deep Step who hate me. They don't like me. They don't want me to be a leader. They plot evil against me. You drive public money in that state, you eat food bought by that public state that you are condemning, you, you live in a house of that state, when does it become deep and deeper than you? <laughs>